welcome back to another video. We're currently at Hope Park Pagoda and let me just say it is absolutely beautiful here. It's about a 20 minute bike ride from our hotel that we're staying in. So we thought why not pop in and come check it out. Uh, thoughts on the temple, it's very very beautiful but you do get the impression that it's newly built for tourist reasons. Uh, it doesn't seem to have been here for very long. I was trying to read up about the pagoda but didn't really find much information about it. Something going on behind me that just happened as we started vlogging, Murphy's Law. Um, yeah, it's quiet now. <laughs> It's about 4 p.m. in the afternoon and it is super duper hot here still. Um, we suggest coming later in the day because it really is hot here and there's a lot of walking upstairs and things and ladies you have to cover yourself so... As with, as with most temples they do say cover your knees, cover your shoulders but when you get here you find no one's really observing that. Anyway we thought we'd make a little vlog on yeah. this place because it is really pretty and it's um, on the to-do list in Fukuok. Tomorrow we're gonna probably go through to the Fukuok prison and yeah we'll include that in this video so stay tuned for that footage. It's our last day here at the Junhain Resort. We Junhin. at the Junhin Resort. <laughs> uh, we're going through to the Fukuok Prison, and then we have to take back our bikes, which is a pretty sad time. So anyway, let's go. guys so we've arrived at the Phu Quoc prison this prison was used to imprison Vietnamese people uh, anyone that was against the French regime <laughs> during the colonial period and it was later taken over by the Saigon government and used to imprison uh, communist supporters yeah so there's a lot of political activists that were imprisoned here and actually treated very very badly but we'll learn more about it a bit later This fence behind me, I believe, is around 12 layers of barbed wire. So I think the only way out without any cutting would have been to dig underneath the fence, which I believe some prisoners actually managed to do. Give a fact. What fact? <laughs> okay guys, so behind us um, you'll see these cages. These cages are called tiger cages. Um, the prisoners were put in here for multiple days and they had to stay in here day and night through the sun, through the rain, through the fog. Um, they were only given shorts to wear and nothing else. Any small movement and they would have cut their bodies on these terrifying barbed wire cages. And they were basically tortured day and night. When it was cold weather they would throw icy water on them, when it was hot weather they would give them absolutely no water at all. They were not allowed to use the toilet. It was mainly by the Saigon government to basically torture North Vietnamese communist supporters. And just like the tiger cages, we've got one of these katso cages, which is basically just a big tin box. Prisoners were kept inside that day and night for days on end. Um, 
locked away completely in the dark with absolutely no airflow. Um, many people died in there too. Each one of these tin uh, structures housed 900 prisoners and all of this is a basic plank structure for them to sit on, I guess, sleep on and just that's it. No cells, nothing. Very, very interesting. A prisoner beating up a guard. There's more prisoners beating guards. Originally the floors were made of soil and they had to actually lay concrete eventually because many of the prisoners would dig holes straight out of this stockade and get out underneath the fences from there. This is just one of the many horrific torture methods used at the prison. Really not a good site at all. Uh, now we're going to go and head into some of the tunnels that the prisoners dug to get out. So the tunnel I'm walking in isn't the actual tunnel, it's the small one on the side that the prisoners used to crawl out of here. Crazy. It's so long. There were seven successful prison breaks and about 21 people per prison break. There's a little hole that they climbed out of, as you can see, on the other side of the fence. And in that direction is freedom. Well done to them. So that concludes the prison tour. Prison tour. It's pretty deep. I'm a bit confused because we are taught in high school and um, in university about how the communists did horrible things to the South Vietnamese. So I'm a bit shocked to see that it was actually the South Vietnamese and the South government that did this to the communists. The torture techniques and everything, the way they treated the prisoners is actually is like really bad. It reminds me of like the Holocaust and what Hitler did to the Jews. So I'm surprised that this kind of thing has been kind of kept quiet for so long. Uh, I know the prison's been here a while, but in terms of international history, not much is said about it. So. Yeah, it's quite an eye-opener and very, very hectic to see. Okay guys, we hope you enjoyed this vlog. I know we started off on a light topic and we ended off really deep, but yeah, it's a huge eye-opener and something you should do when you come to Fukuok. So if you like this video, please give it a like. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and we'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye!